Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. How do you separate concerns when processing a request? Typical things like validation, logging, exception handling, retries, and many more. I'll explain the pipes and filters pattern to decompose these concerns into a series of tasks. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more info on EventStoreDB, check the link in the description. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. If at any point you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. So the pipes and filters pattern is a great way to decompose these concerns into a series kind of a steps that creates a pipeline for a request. And I say request because you may think of it as a web request. And as I start explaining this, you might realize you're already using this in your web framework of choice. Um, but I generally also use this heavily when talking about messaging and processing a message because a message just like processing a request. So the first way this can work is I have a pump, which is the first box on the very left. And you can think of this as just the thing that's originating the actual request and going to execute it. So what happens is, is instead of going directly to the receiver, the thing that needs to handle your request, before that, it's actually gonna go through a filter. And this is a filter that you define. Say this filter is doing logging. All it's gonna do is log your request. And then that request will get set to potentially another filter. Maybe this other filter is gonna validate the request to make sure it's valid or acceptable. And then we have another filter here that maybe is doing some authorization, maybe it's doing some exception handling. And then after that executes, then finally our request goes to our receiver. So one important distinction here is that your filters are independent and they're plug and play, they're composable. You can decide for a particular request, maybe I wanna do in this example that I have, there's logging, validation, and some caching filter that I have before I actually get to my primary receiver. So the place you could probably relate this to most, and maybe you're already using this, is in ASP.NET Core action filters. So you have your controller and MVC, and you have your uh, action method, your route, and you can define attributes for things like logging, validation, or you can create your own. And this is exactly how it would work. Before your actual action uh, method is invoked and called by the framework, it can go through the attributes, the action filters that you've defined on that particular method. So it can go through a logging filter, a validation filter, and maybe a caching filter before your actual action method is even executed. So you're probably already using this in something like ASP.NET Core if you're using action filters. So another way of doing this, but still having a pipeline is called the Russian doll model. And the idea here is I still have some various uh, filters what happens is when I send a request to my first filter, let's say it's logging, it does what it needs to do. And then logging calls the next filter. It knows there's a filter because it has a uniform interface that it can call. It doesn't know necessarily what it's actually gonna do, but one filter is essentially calling the next filter. And you're kind of creating a chain of what these filters are. So we have logging that sends it to validation, validation sends it to the retry, and then the retry sends it to the receiver. The retry in this case doesn't really know that it's the final destination, it just looks like it's sending it to another receiver. And the receiver, because it has the same uniform interface, um, works like any other filter. The difference is, is that call stack goes all the way back. So as everything finishes, we get all the way back to our original, the pump, which originated the request. So what this means is that you can kind of short circuit along the way. So if you had logging, for example, that it needed to do something, it then calls validation. It doesn't know it's validation. It just thinks it's another filter. But validation could say, oh no, something's wrong or I don't like how this request looks. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna call the next filter. So instead it just will return. And at that point we kind of short circuited the, the whole pipeline and went back to the, back to the pump. So an example of this that you may have used is in ASP.NET Core middleware, specifically if you've created middleware. You know that when you create middleware, you have to call the next middleware. If you never created middleware, you know that in your startup, you have to define all the middleware in a particular sequence. Where you put your actual methods of middleware that you wanna use matters because you're defining your pipeline. You can create middleware that does exactly this kind of short circuiting where maybe you have some special middleware that does authorization or caching, caching for example, 
that you decide, oh, I don't need to actually go to the final destination, to that controller or whatever it is, and I can just return the response now. So it means that you just don't call the next middleware. So I'm gonna jump into some code to illustrate this, and I'm gonna be using Brighter, which is a messaging library. And specifically, it has a command dispatcher that you can use pipes and filters with. So all my developer level members get access to the source code. I really do appreciate your support. If you're interested in joining, go to my channel and click the join button for more info. So with Brighter, I have a command to illustrate this and a handler. So my place order command is just a request from Brighter that has an ID. If you're familiar with something like Mediator, this should look fairly similar. And we have a handler for that request. So I'm using this uh, base class request handler and I have my handle method. I'm just doing a console right line here just to illustrate, but the key point to this is I'm calling base.handle and returning that. And behind the scenes in that request handler uh, base class, it's actually calling the next, like the next handler, which is the next filter. And this is because a request handler or a filter, it has the same interface. They're just request handlers. So that's what allows you to create this pipeline. And to create this pipeline, it looks similar to ASP.NET Core Action Filters, where you're just defining what the actual filters are for the end result here for our request handler. So in this case, I have a logging filter, I have this retry handler, and I have a validation handler that I've defined. So let's take a look at this first filter, which is logging. So that's the first one that's gonna execute. And this is just very generic. It doesn't really matter necessarily that it is a place order command. It can be any type of command, really, that's any type of request. And I'm just logging. But because it is a I request, I don't necessarily know what the contents of it are. Like, yes, I know there's gonna be an ID because it's an I request, but any additional properties from that, I don't really know. So this is just kind of that plug and play generic. But I've actually created a separate retry handler that I've made specifically just for place order command. So this isn't gonna be able to be reused in a, another pipeline, but that's fine. If you have specific things that you need to have for a particular request, you can, you can create uh, specific filters just for a request. Not everything just needs to be generic. So in this particular case, I do know that T request is gonna be a place order command. And what I'm doing here is I'm just wrapping this in a try catch and I'm actually executing the next filter in the step, which may be a filter, maybe the end result, this actual handler that I need. And if something fails specifically with an invalid operation exception, I'm just actually calling it again and trying again. This would be perfect for something like poly or any type of other library you can use for just dealing with failures and adding some resiliency. But just to illustrate, so I have that. And then I also have my third filter, which is this validation handler, which again is specific for this command. But again, you could make something more generic that you're just handling of an I request. Uh, but in this case, I'm making it specific and I'm checking, oh, if the command ID is uh, basically an empty GUID, then I'm gonna basically throw at this point. But the idea being here is that this is my handler for this request and I'm creating this pipeline using these uh, filter attributes. All right, so what I've done is added some breakpoints just to illustrate and run this so that we can see that we're gonna first go through the logging filter, then we're gonna go to the retry, then to validation, and then finally we'll end up here at this uh, place order handler. So jump over to the program here. We can see I'm actually gonna send this particular command. And yes, we end up at the logging handler and we printed this out to the console. Now I'm gonna end up at our retry handler and we're gonna call the next filter. So we've printed our to the console here, uh, retry handler executing. Now we're calling the next filter, which is our validation. So we're printing that out, we'll jump over to this. This is where we're actually gonna call the next filter. And then finally, we ended up at our next filter, which is really the end of the pipeline, which is our actual place order handler. So as you can see, the pipes and filters pattern is really powerful. It allows you to separate various concerns that you have from the core of what your request actually is and what you actually need to do. And they're composable, especially if they're generic, where you can just kind of plug and play different filters a part of different requests but you can create custom filters for a particular pipeline, for a particular request, if you need to. And also be aware of the Russian doll model. Because you have a uniform interface, everything just looks like a request handler, just like I was showing with Brighter. You have one filter, call the next filter. And maybe you have a particular filter that wants a short circuit and not call the next filter. With the Russian doll model, you can do that. So another aspect of this that I'm not covering, which is used, is the concept of an execution context. or something where a filter can place data inside a context 
that future filters can use. Now this had some implications related to temporal coupling where there's gotta be a specific order of how these filters are processing because maybe an earlier filter needs to do something that a later filter is expecting. I'm gonna cover that in a future video, so make sure to subscribe if you're into this topic. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.